here we are. We're recording again for Coffee yes, Pods. Coffee Pods, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So uh, today we are looking at our series of uh, overcoming. So okay. last time we were together, which feels like ages ago, we looked at this series. Mm. Um, we were looking at overcoming doubt, and that was focusing on possibly living too much in the present, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Doubts that we may face. But today we're looking together at um, overcoming fear, such a big topic, this one. Um, mm. And that could really be uh, living too much in to the future, you know, yeah. worrying about your future or, or what's to come and things like that. Um, and so let's just pull this apart a little bit as we look at overcoming fears. What's the deal with fear? Is it a bad thing to fear? Right, it is, isn't it? I mean... Um, fear in, in itself isn't isn't necessarily um, a bad thing every time. So, for instance, we are likely to uh, teach our children appropriate levels of caution or fear. You know, don't walk too close to a cliff edge or deep water or the, the cooker or the kettle. Don't touch it. And in a sense, fear has that element of being a little bit protective uh, for us. Um, and and so, you know, we, we talk a little bit about the fear of the Lord, something that is good and, and protective for us. But I guess when we talk about overcoming our fears, it tends to be the situations, the things, the people that we feel powerless before, um, that we lose choice and liberty and freedom. Yeah. And so, in a sense, um, the, the fear that's protective that's a good thing for us. Um, but actually, there is a fear that sort of dominates and paralyzes us, yeah. um, that sort of leaves us without that sense of freedom. And, and of course, you know, you can see that throughout history. So it's it's those sort of things that we had in mind. Yeah, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? To, if you ask the question, when, when you hear the word fear, what do you think? Because there's, oh, yeah. there's all sorts of, as you've just brought out really quickly, there's all sorts of associations with the word fear yeah there are and of course for most of us you know it's negative and, and at times it can be trivial like fear of spiders and stuff but mind you, if you're afraid of spiders it can really you know i was gonna say it might not be trivial <laughs> it might not be trivial you know i saw a great picture of a, of a of an elephant that was actually terrified of a mouse you know and the more the mouse advanced the elephant had sort of backed away Aww. sort of thing you thought isn't it funny that fear isn't any relation to size? Yeah. Because the size of the problem doesn't necessarily make it more fearful for us. Yeah. Can do, but actually not necessarily. So I think in that sense, one of the things we tended to think about was the things that overwhelm us to the state of being terrified and powerless and paralyzed, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so it'd be interesting that, you know, we maybe do that. Say to people, when you hear the word fear, what do you think about? Yeah, interesting. Mm. Um, well, let's take it to the Bible. <laughs> yeah, okay, might as well. <laughs> there has to be many biblical examples of fear, hasn't there? Can you just uh, bring out some that would be helpful? Yeah, I mean, it, it really is, isn't it? I mean, there, there, there are moments when um, people are afraid. And funnily enough, there are moments when people should be afraid but aren't you yeah. know and you yeah. think oh it's really really interesting so take um take the story of um david and goliath mm. um uh, okay you know i i've met a man who is seven feet eight tall and and you know whatever. But goliath was nine feet and a bit you know <laughs> so this is like don't even come into the average house yeah. you, you know you know it i mean that big you know and and of course it says that the way the story is set up the armies in camp on you know either side of a valley and the challenge is given to israel and it says of all of the all of the soldiers that were there it, it, it the story starts with the phrase and they and they were afraid mm. okay and of course the idea is that one of them is going to have to go out and fight this this giant you yeah. know and of course, everybody's thinking, OK, I'm five foot three. Um, you know, I don't even reach up to his knees type of thing. You know, understand what I mean? And everybody's afraid. Now, of course, the interesting thing is if they all charged him at once. OK, 
it would have been a completely different story, wouldn't it? I mean, okay, you might have got some of them, but actually not all of them, you know, and whatever. But of course, that never occurs to them either. But of course, as the story develops and this thing keeps going on and as time accentuates the story, the text is really clear. It says they went from fear to great fear. Mm, wow. And so the, the longer it goes on, you know, the worse it gets. Mm. And that's true of our fears, isn't it? You know, the longer that you um, allow the thing to reside in your life, the more um, hold it has upon you. Of course, in the same story, there's David. And I, you know, I don't know whether he's afraid or not, but he doesn't appear to be. Because his words are, yeah, OK, you've come at me with a, you know, a spear that I couldn't probably lift up or whatever. But I come against you in the name of the Lord. So there's a, here's a moment when somebody should be afraid, but isn't because of something else. Daniel in the lion's den, yeah. you know, should be afraid. But he says, God's going to cover this, you know. And so those those two sort of perspectives. Um, the Psalms are full of yeah. people, you know, people afraid. I mean, you could pick any Psalm. I mean, you yeah. know, pick one. Uh, that has something in on, on it and you're you understand the human condition uh, psalm 42 you know i bless the lord at all times and it says i sought the lord he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears and so you know whether that's removing the source of fear or actually removing the fear of the source you know <laughs> both of those things would apply mm. so um but then you go through is israel is afraid um, you know, the church is afraid before Pentecost. They're hiding for fear of the Jews yeah. uh, and fear of Rome, apart from anything else as well. Um, you know, and so there are clearly stories where something gets hold of us in a way. So interesting. I, and I'm wondering, like, this is a big question, but would Jesus have feared um, not necessarily... Like, so I, I truly believe that Jesus, especially during, like, Passion Week, he knew the Father's plans. Yeah. But, like, would he have, as a human, feared the people, you know, coming and, and, and torturing him and, you know, just doing whatever they would with him? Would he have feared that? Or It's a great question, isn't it? Um one of the things that we do is uh, in fear is we can uh, psychologists call it catastrophize. We can, you know, uh, my mother used to call it making a mountain out of a molehill sort of thing. <laughs> we can suddenly take something that's happening and we can let it mushroom and get bigger and bigger and bigger to the point that we expect the worst and then yeah. some, you know. Yeah. And I, I've known people who even in simple um family gatherings are terrified because they've a bit like a chess game they've worked out every possible thing that's going to go wrong and every argument that could happen and every yeah, and yeah. suddenly this is a huge thing and and it's understandable when it's something like surgery in hospital and stuff like that and people can you know make the whole thing huge so the question is did jesus feel afraid well i mean the scripture is very clear that he felt had experienced everything that we do yeah. um, and it adds yet without sin and and in a sense um to fear is to, to experience fear yeah. is is not the wrong thing the thing is what happens to you in the moment when it's there right. and that's when and that's when we choose do I embrace this or do I turn to God and say, actually, but you, God, you're much bigger. Yeah. So, yeah. So did Jesus know the experience of fear? I, I would probably say yes. Um, was he terrified by it? I probably, I couldn't answer that question because he was also conscious perhaps more quickly than we are mm. of the father's presence and the father's love. Mm. But you have to take Gethsemane. Lord. Yeah. Do I really have to do this? Yeah. N knowing what's going to come over a period of six or eight hours, you know, over two days, do yeah. I really have to do this? And the anticipation of it is often part of the fear deal yeah. where we can, you know, we, we understand that. Um, 
it's a great phrase as Woody Allen says uh, I don't mind dying I just don't want to be there when it happens and <laughs> and and you know and so you know there are things when we have the understanding of what might come but of course projecting it and working out so yeah I think Jesus understood what it is when we're afraid but I think he also then turned into the father perhaps more quickly than I would yeah and, I can understand. do you know yeah. uh, and get that um but I I think I think the difficulty that and you brought up a great question, Lisa, is is what do we do in that moment? That's the key. Because mm-hmm. mm. you've mentioned and you said this also with the doubt. It's it's not having the doubt or having the fear that's the issue. It's what it does to us. Mm. Mm. Um, and I suppose that's yeah. Because like I mean, you mentioned that you could catastrophize it, or mm. it could just completely overwhelm your life. And obviously, that's not good for your well being. No, it isn't. And and I, I, at the risk of sounding Christian and trite, um, the thing that has helped me the most was given to me by a guy who uh, mentored me, a guy called Kemmer Grevy. And uh, he said this. He said that we overcome fear when the fear of the Lord is the presiding fear of our life. Wow. So let me work that back. We overcome fear when the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom and is good and righteous, when the fear of the Lord becomes the main fear, the presiding fear of our life. So if you work that back to the conversation we just had about Jesus, yes, he could fear the crowds and, the, and, and, and all the stuff and whatever. And But actually, the fear of the Lord, that healthy respect reverence honoring living in alignment with god that was the presiding fear of his life and therefore that was a bigger thing than the little things peter talks about the these light and momentary troubles and at the time there were some fairly serious (laughs) persecutions going on but he says compared to to the father's love that's a little thing compared to this and I think perhaps in the moment in in get in, in the Garden of, of Eden with Adam and Eve, and I wasn't there, so I can't tell you how it happened. But, you know, the thing that got overwhelmed was their fear of the Lord. Yeah. And so suddenly they started to come under the fear of other things. So I, I guess in the end, in our fears, I'm asking myself the question, am I loved by God? Does he have my best interests both at heart and in his hands? And whatever happens, is he going to be with me? Yeah. And and in, in the end, and, and I, I preached on Sunday, brought a phrase out by a guy called Winky Prattney. Great name, that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and, and he said, do you know what the essence of Christianity is? God. God is God and you are not. <laughs> yeah. That's it. And actually, I find that I become more afraid when I think that I'm God and I'm in charge of it all. Yeah. Oh, yes. When actually I know I'm loved. I know he has my best interest at heart and in his hands. And I know he's going to be with me, whatever. I think that's a lovely thing. You know, um, if you can just remind yourself of that, like you do, um, Mm. or, or even if you need something a little bit more to the point, like God is God and I am not. You yeah. think it's helpful to just in those moments just change your mind frame and and say something even out yeah. loud like yeah. that. Yeah, oh. I, I got a funny story. I, I used that phrase in a in a sermon just recently, and I said, just turn to the person next to you and just say, "God is God, and you are not." And I watched a wife turn to her husband, and she really meant it. <laughs> She's wanted to say it for some years. Yes. <laughs> and somebody gave her permission, but I think that's the thing. If you can remind yourself. Um, because fear distorts our view of reality. Yes. And if I can refresh my view of reality, I'm loved by God. He has my best interest in his heart and in his hands, and he's going to be with me, whatever. Love it. Thank you. What a lovely way to bring it to a close. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So um, we will be back next month, and we're going to make sure I get this right. We're going to be looking at overcoming shame, aren't yeah. we? And that's about living too much um, in the past, shame and guilt. And yeah. um, I think we'll also have another 
podcast looking at the topic actually of healing in passion week if we've got yes right yes um so yeah we're looking forward to that one as well but thank you wes and right. thank you guys for listening and we'll catch you soon bye-bye yeah bye